75 years of independence is what Sri Lanka celebrates this year. And here we are at Independence Square, which is where it all happened. Commissioned by Prime Minister D.S. Nanayaka, this building was designed by eight notable architects. The assembly hall, the Magul Madua, was inspired by the royal court of the Candian Kingdom and the stone lions depict the statues from the 13th century Yapahua Kingdom. Until Parliament moved to its new abode, Independence Square was a ceremonial assembly hall for Ceylon State and House of Representatives. Welcome, Happy Independence Week, this is Kaleidoscope. To our truly incomparable partners on the show, Skills for Inclusive Growth and Australian Aid, Selinko Life, CDB, The Morning Newspaper, Park Street Gome, and Zip Zip. Thank you. If you like Kaleidoscope, subscribe and follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. You can now start a CDB iDeposit Digital Fixed Deposit and experience a range of special benefits from CDB. And now for a look at the week that was on CDB Snapshot. The IMF calls the world surprisingly resilient and raises the global growth forecast to 2.9%. And in Sri Lanka, inflation eases further, decreasing to 54.2% in January. Sri Lanka's 2022 exports topped the 13 billion US dollar mark, recording an increase of 4.9%, but falls below 16 billion US dollar targets. The apparel sector ends the year with a 22% growth in exports amounting to 5.6 million US dollars, although seeing a dip in year-on-year -year growth in the last quarter. Lankan fabric imports from India jumped by more than 50% in four years. Vanessa De Silva makes history by becoming the first Sri Lankan female umpire at the finals of the Under-19 Women's Cricket World Cup in South Africa. A 35-foot long humpback whale, the largest in a decade, washes ashore in New York. Shah Rukh Khan breaks the Bollywood box office with his latest release, Patan, becoming the fastest Hindi film to cross the 36 million US dollar threshold during its launch. on your goals. We will take care of the risks. Selinko Life. Welcome to our Selinko Life News Capsule. Debt restructuring and the IMF bailout will probably become reality by only end 2023. Then, Fitch Ratings has been downgrading our sovereign rating. There's talk of an increase in electricity tariffs. Local government elections may or may not happen. And reforms. Well, that's taking long too. CEO of Advocata Institute, Dharanath Fanera, joined me in the studio to flesh out some of the questions on where we stand right now. So welcome, Dharanath. We live in a fluid state at the moment. What do you think would be a viable solution in the immediate if we are to get over some of the hurdles that we are uh, faced with? Two main reforms I recommend. First is uh, reforming the state-owned enterprises, which will take a little time, but we have to engage activate it immediately since it takes time because anyway it's a long process. Second is we have to strengthen our social safety nets because poor people are suffering, they are the most vulnerable sec uh, sector in the society. So we have to definitely strengthen the social safety net, 50 billion rupees for the entire Samurudhi is not adequate enough, we have to have, go for a cash transfer system. Do you get the feeling that everything that we are doing right at this moment is more sort of a band-aid treatment? Absolutely. I think we are very slow and we haven't, uh, we are not taking the proactive measures. Uh, now since the IMF, uh, India has given some level of comfort with IMF, I think we have to immediately take a massive reform plan. Otherwise, it will be too late. We will probably become an Argentina where we will continue to default even after a debt relief. That's so, I, I, I strongly recommend that we take the bitter medicine and move forward. What about bankruptcy? I think we are pretty much bankrupt. It's a matter of how are we going to recover from it. I mean, let's admit the truth. We are all having a difficult time. Interest rates are at uh, record high levels. We can't sustain at that this this phase. So we have to definitely move forward. 
uh, and do the reforms. That is the only solution that I see. There is no other way out. So after your two key reforms that you mentioned, then what? We have to go for reforming the micro and small medium enterprises. They are facing quite a lot of regulatory barriers that has to be reformed and then we really do not have any bankruptcy law, record number of companies will go bankrupt with this crisis. So then for them to really come back, we have to have some bankruptcy laws. So since then with global trade, we have to do some trade reforms and move forward. And here is how our markets have been faring this week. At the Colombo stock market this week, the all share price index moved up marginally by 1%, but the average daily turnover still struggled to surpass 2 billion rupees. WTI oil was at a near one year low at 76.85 US dollars per barrel, falling by more than 3 US dollars a barrel after US government data showed big build ups in crude oil and gasoline inventories. Gold was trading at a nine month high of 1,952 US dollars per ounce after the Federal Reserve raised interest by an expected 25 basis points. It's a bizarre world out there. A Japanese telescope captured a flying blue whirlpool spiral above the Hawaiian night sky. These spirals could be occurring due to rockets venting their leftover fuel, but nevertheless, it's truly a magical sight. Pirates are not a thing of the past. The Gasparilla Pirate Festival in Florida has over 750 swashbuckling pirates invading Tampa Bay aboard the Jose Gasparilla, which is the world's only fully rigged pirate ship. It is now the third largest parade in the United States. Up next is S4IG Let's Talk and today, what is independence is the subject of discussion with Rohan Petiagoda. Sri Lanka celebrates 75 years of independence on the 4th of February, but it's now more than a reminder of our country's independence. At a time when Sri Lankans are finding it difficult to make ends meet, is there anything worth celebrating? Especially spending 200 million rupees, which can be used for a number of other priorities. So, here's the Pethiagoda pages with scientist, conservationist and public policy advocate Rohan Pethiagoda on S4IG Let's Talk with some home truths about this year's independence and what it means for Sri Lankans. Rohan, welcome. So we are all agog about Independence Day, but what is independence for Sri Lanka at this point? Is it meaningful or is it meaningless? I think independence is always meaningful. It's just that I don't think we've, we've got the full meaning, the implications of independence. Many people feel that in 1948 we became independent of the United Kingdom. In fact, it was the other way around. Remember the flow of resources was from the colonies to the mother country, not the other way around. And so it was that Britain became independent of us, which we often forget. And then we were cut off and we are on our own for the last 75 years. And I think if we measure the progress made in those 75 years compared with the progress made in the preceding 75 years, the, the years before independence, we haven't done so well. We started at the top of the Asian League in 1948, we've fallen behind. Many countries have zoomed ahead of us, South Korea, Taiwan, even Indonesia, Malaysia for sure. So we've, we've lagged behind and that is a pity because we had a really good head start of the Asian countries after the Second World War, and we lost the edge. Are we really independent, given that we are, you know, we are still beholden to the West, the South, the East, and you name it? That's our own fault. If you think about it, four years after independence, in 1952, we had the first general strike, the so-called Hartal. And that was about retaining the rice ration subsidized rice that was given out from the time of the Second World War. And people insisted that they get it. The unwillingness of the Sri Lankan people to stand on their own two feet and earn an honest living has been the bane of this country. And the only way that politicians can get themselves elected is by pandering to that thirst for free stuff. And that's, I think, in large measure the thing that's pulled us down. So governments have successively borrowed. Right now, we've borrowed north of 100% of GDP our borrowing standard. 
which is crazy. We borrow more than we produce. How can we justify spending 200 million on an Independence Day celebration uh, when we're actually standing with a begging bowl for our daily necessities? I can answer that in two ways. I'm going to answer it the unpopular way. Government spending this year is 5.8 trillion rupees. 200 million rupees is a rounding error. It, it's not a significant amount of money. Even if you look at defense spending, and most of this money, the 200 million that's been spent, has been spent through the defense establishment. Defense spending is 600 billion this year. If you divide that by the number of days and the number of hours in the year, it works out at about 80 million rupees per hour. Regardless of what you do, 80 million rupees get spent every hour by the defense establishment. So this is less than three hours worth of spending. This is not a big deal. So the 200 million rupees is a drop in the ocean. It's insignificant. Whether the government should have signaled to the country that it wanted to tone things down and give a more austere appearance, yeah, sure, that's up for debate. But the money itself is irrelevant. It's insignificant. How do you suggest the president should have handled Independence Day this year? Toning it down would have helped. But at the same time, the president is worried about civil order going into the next two years of his term. It's going to get worse as time goes on because there's going to be strikes asking for higher wages, for example. People, people can't manage the present level of the cost of living and the taxation. So there might be civil disobedience. He needs the armed forces on his side. So I think what he's done is probably the right thing, looking at it from his point of view. Looking at it from the country's point of view, it's an altogether wrong signal because it, it smacks of repression. With the rest of the world, uh, knowing how badly off we are, what is the signal we are sending out to our our donors, our uh, you know the the uh, those who are going to be giving us uh, funds, and even to the IMF for that matter? These donors and the IMF and the international agencies have known the nature of Sri Lankan politicians for generations now. Nothing's changed. So they they know the character of the people they're dealing with. That they're generally petty, small-minded people, regardless of which party you talk about. And so I don't think there's anything new. No, no one's going to wake up in bed and say, oh, we're really surprised that Sri Lanka's having this big celebration. Thank you so much, Rohan. You've just brought everybody down to the ground, basically. That was Rohan Petiagoda on the Petiagoda pages. And we've been chatting about the ground realities of Independence Day this year. Cupid is just around the corner. Fill your heart with the best of love and romance from Park Street Gourmet. It is where Valentine's Day comes alive. What better way to celebrate Independence Week than being in Jaffna? And we are at the Valvatuture Beach at the annual Jaffna Kite Festival. Organised by the Valvatuture Community Centre and the Uday Surian Sports Club, I have with me K. Prakash, who explains why kite flying is more than simply, well, kite flying. Here he is on Park Street Gourmet Life in 60. The kites are built individually, but sometimes with the help of their families and friends. Originally, people were from Jaffna, but during the past two years, people have come across Jaffna from Northern Province to take part. So, the main objective of this festival is to make individuals compete with each other to learn design techniques, innovation and creativity and also to increase and improve their bonding and relationship among them. So, this has pushed the competitors to build their kites for a whole year just to take part in this annual fest because this kite festival has about 150 to 200 varieties of kites competing with each other. Happy Independence Day Sri Lanka! We'll be back next week.